Is anybody else out there as sick of hearing about this Bitcoin ETF as I am? Or am I alone out here? Because the amount of speculation going around right now is literally doing my head in. Somebody who trades what I see and not what I feel is having a very difficult time with the amount of rubbish that is out there right now talking about, I think we're going to spike up, then shoot right down. Or I think that it's going to get rejected and we're just going to have a massive correction. And Guys, none of this, none of this is good for your mindset right now. There is literally no point in guessing what is going to happen. That is the whole point of the market is to have you make an emotional decision. There is no better time than right now to sit out of the market on especially leveraged trades, especially short-term leveraged trades. If you're a spot holder, fine. You would hold through it, you know, if you have a long-term plan, if you believe regardless of the spot ETF being approved or not, if you believe that we are in the bull market phase of the cycle, whether we have a major correction or not, if you believe that, then your spot bags are fine. You're supposed to ride the dips of that whole period of time because you're not trying to guess the tops and the bottoms short term if you've built a bull market cycle portfolio. If that's what you've done already, then you're not planning to sell until Bitcoin breaks its all time high. So that makes all of this irrelevant, right? Unless you think there's a chance that bad news about the spot ETF is going to send Bitcoin all the way back down below 15K, then you shouldn't be worried, okay? So let's put that aside. Nobody can predict what is going to happen. Anybody who is putting ideas out there right now about, you know, we're going to wick here or we're going to wick there and then we're going to have a $10,000 candle and then this, they're just guessing. And some of them will end up being right and some won't. And they're guessing so that they have something that is recorded and date stamped that they can go see. I told you so. But if they don't guess right, they won't be saying that, right? So just understand that none of this, what is going on right now, none of these ideas of like, whatever's going to happen, none of it is designed to look after you. If somebody genuinely wants to look after you, the answer right now is to sit on your hands and wait. Don't panic sell. Don't panic buy. You're too late. That's the truth of the matter. You are too late. The time to buy was early 2023, okay? Now we sit on our hands and we wait. The fact of the matter is there is many things that could happen. We're gonna go and take a look at the chart. And I'm, look, I'm looking at the charts in this video because I want to show you what is happening, right? I want to be clear that nothing that I'm gonna talk about on the charts in this video is an indication for you to make a move, right? Whether that's open a long, open a short, sell your portfolio, buy. I'm not doing that in this video. We're going to talk about what is happening for the purpose of a discussion, but I myself am not opening any new trades right now. Any leverage trades that I do have open, they're already protected with my stop loss in profit. There is an altcoin trade I'm looking at, which I will go over um, with you guys in this video. It's not quite ready yet, but it's getting close. Other than that, like I just don't see anything on the chart to actually trade, but I do want to talk to you about what is happening on the chart. So let's take a look at that. If you're new here, welcome. Sorry for that rant, <laughs> but I just, I can't help it. I have to be honest. If I think that there are things out there that are just not genuinely serving you, I have to be honest about that. And I just don't think anyone's saying, I think this is going to happen or that. Like we're just guessing and it just, it causes emotions and it causes FUD and it just doesn't serve anyone. So if you are new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Be sure to smash that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and hit like if you just want to talk about 
pure price action, emotion free trading or investing or whatever it is. Who cares? Let's just look at what the charts are showing us. All right, I'm starting with Bitcoin on the daily time frame, and I do have some key liquidation levels marked out for you. Now, look, when something big happens, none of this is going to be relevant. There is so much liquidity above and below price. Let me just show you that here. You can see that on the upside, all of these blue areas are people who are currently short. If we have a big spike to the upside, this is all going to get wiped. But we also have a lot of liquidity below price as well. It really can go either way. And the current delta is at 100K, which is basically a delta of zero in all reality. So we're basically at a 50-50 with, you know, almost equal longs and shorts. You can see here short liquidations 201, longs 237. So it's anyone's guess and whichever way the market maker wants to send price, it's free run for him. You know, there's profits either side for them. It's kind of irrelevant. If we have a look at a little bit of higher time frame liquidity, I'm looking at the one month here for Bitcoin still. And we can see that the brighter yellow areas are currently below price, meaning sending price down is going to be more profitable for the market maker than sending price up. However, sending it up is going to then bring in more liquidity because people will panic into long positions if we break any key levels. So for now, we're just noting what's there and we have a big liquidity area at about 39,500 to let's say around 40K. And then we have another one at 35,100. So if things go bad, these would probably be two areas, especially if you wanna buy for the long term, you know, spot positions, whatever. These are probably gonna be some good areas to dollar cost average should the price come down. So we've got those ones in mind. This is the kind of area around here. So if price did come down to those areas, it is gonna break the daily time frame 50 EMA. At this point in time, we are above that. So this is the blue line here. And we did have that big liquidation hunt that we had the other day that did spike into it and then close back up above it. So the 50 EMA for quite some time now, since the uh, 16th of October, price has been well and truly above it on the daily timeframe. That is very bullish. As you can see here that we have this highlighted area. If I scroll back, you'll be able to see why that's highlighted. And that's because of this red vector candle here on the 7th of, oh, sorry, 6th of April. That's what price is currently trying to eat its way through. As you may or may not know, when it comes to vector candles, we care about the bottom, the top and the middle area of it. All of these are our area of interest, usually the middle because that's where the highest volume actually comes in when that candle is in the process of forming. So that's at about 40 4,000, let's say 44,300. So that becomes our area of interest. And if we go back to the current price, you can see here that it's exactly acted as resistance, exactly resistance. This one was a false move to the upside, which another thing we talk about a lot in this channel, if they're going to send price down to liquidate people, they will push it up first, right? If they're gonna send price up, they will push it down first. So we had a fake break to the upside. Why? Because that would induce people to go long. The breakout trade, who have long positions set here. They put buy stops just above resistance because they see price pushing up, pushing up, but they believe on confirmation when it breaks resistance, we're going up to the next major level. And that's exactly how they trap. They push price through that resistance to trigger all of these long orders. Then they immediately bring it right back down, which liquidates them in an instant. This is why I don't believe in breakout trading, especially just blind placing buy stops above resistance or sell stops below support. A very, very bad <laughs> trading strategy in my opinion. And since then, we've literally just been ranging on the daily time frame, which you kind of expect. Like at this point in time, everyone's just waiting for some kind of answer. You know, they're not really willing to commit. That number that I read to you earlier, this 200, that's very low, right? So it's really not a lot of people. I mean, this is on leverage, but there's not many people playing in the leverage market right now based on that. Everything else following that is essentially just a doji, but we still haven't really broken above and closed above that 50% vector. But look, this 20 EMA here, the red one, this is where price is holding. Like, like I said, those are bullish signs, but charts aren't going to help you when there's fundamental news that we're waiting on. We essentially just have to wait and see. But all of this at this point in time doesn't give me a reason to exit any longs. That's the one thing. If you're in a long position, whether it's spot position or you're in a leverage long, you know, and, and this move here didn't take you out. So you've been in a leverage long, you know, since 
25k or whatever, then you got no reason to exit your long right now. I can't see on the daily time frame price action alone. I cannot see a reason to short at this point in time but I cannot see a reason also to exit your long positions. What would make me exit a leverage long position? Because just remember when it comes to spot, I'm not selling my Bitcoin. Like I don't care. It could drop by 50% and I would be buying because I have still an amount of money for the next bull market that I haven't even invested yet. You know, so I have dry powder essentially to put in on a major, major dump, which is what I've been waiting for, whether it happens now or later, it doesn't happen at all. I don't really care, but I'm not selling what I've already invested in so far. So this would be my condition to close a leverage position and potentially swing short. And that would be a change in market structure. So this would end up forming the first peak of an M formation, which it may have at this point in time. Price would come down. Maybe it would take out this liquidity that's sitting down here, take a push up and create a lower high, maybe take out this liquidity on that attempt and then that there is where I would consider opening a short position. Now, just know this isn't based on price. It's based on the shape that I would expect the candlesticks to make. And so, yeah, that peak could happen here. It could, you know, it could happen kind of anywhere. But I'd be looking for this shape in order to open a short position. And that's why I don't have one right now, because I'm nowhere near that shape on the daily time frame. And if anything, look, I see a bunch of weeks below price that are still pushing price up. Like I said, not giving me a reason to go short at this point in time on a macro time frame. So now that we know where we are on this kind of macro scale, let's go and have a look at the four hour time frame. And what we have on the four hour time frame is we've got three hits here, and then you have that fake stop hunt move to the upside. This this here is the final damage. So when you have three hits to the high, then you get a breakout and the breakout doesn't retest, it fails. That's a final damage move there, essentially a stop hunt, because there would have been a lot of longs placed here, right? So that's why that happened immediately liquidated. Everything left of this is wiped out now. And again, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know one of my sayings that I say all the time is fast move up, fast move down, consolidate to rebalance. That's what's happening right now. And that's because a fast move up here with these green vector candles is creating a a gap in the order book, right? Every, it gets wiped out so, so fast. So unless we consolidate back down, that order book doesn't get refilled. So you hold consolidation for a while and then bang, the fast move can come immediately straight back down. Once that's happened, that's when you tend to get the consolidation. This, this consolidation that we've been seeing ever since over the weekend and whatnot, it's just rebalancing the books. That's what's happening. And at this point in time, we can see that we're coming back to eventually try and I guess refill this vector candle right here. So all of these candle closes up to here on the four hour, that would be considered a rebalance zone. and this area that I just highlighted is what's left. And if we mark out 50% of that red vector candle there, then again, look, we've got this week to it exact and this one to exact and looks like the candle's probably going to come up to make another one. Now, people who are typical FIB level traders would probably be drawing FIBs from the top here to the bottom of this wick and price is holding around the 61.8 kind of level, the 65% golden pocket zone. You know, this is where people who trade FIBs would probably assume that we're going to short from here. And that would be why there are so many candles holding in this area because people are probably shorting and then somebody is longing against them and price is essentially just holding still for that reason. Again, this is why I don't really want to open new positions right now. It doesn't mean I'm not in trade but I don't really want to open new positions. But really, if we're going to keep moving to the upside, we probably want to see that four hour 50% area, which is at 44,550. We probably want to see that break next because there has been multiple attempts and there's still been higher lows essentially created from there. Now, let's have a look at the heat maps. Now we're really looking for the red zones here. So the red zone below price is sitting here at 41,800. So essentially those people who want along from here, they believe that this is a bear flag. It's going to break to the downside. It's going to pick up their longs here. That's 
what they essentially believe. Then to the upside, there's a couple of areas. This one isn't as strong, but there's 46,200. And then there's say 47,900. And so that's those two areas there. So somebody believes we're going to break, somebody with a lot of money believes we're going to break to the upside. We're going to maybe create a new false high and they want to short from there to bring price back down. And there's two areas where they believe that would happen. Probably there is some liquidity above there. We can see here there's 46 1,112. It's close to this one right here. And then we don't really, this map doesn't really show us too much higher than that. All right. So that is what is happening there with Ethereum. Ethereum's a little bit trickier, but it's kind of good. Actually, I want to show you something that is happening with Ethereum on the Bitcoin pairing, as well as just the higher time frame. So this is the vector. It's been a long time. This is the vector that we've been waiting for Ethereum to break right here since the 10th of May, 2022. And this is where we are right now. But what I want to note about the current daily candle at this point in time is that it is currently now, when I say currently, there is 12 hours of the daily candle to go. So anything can happen in 12 hours. But at this point in time, it is looking like it's trying to form a hammer off the 50 EMA on the daily time frame. If that does close as a hammer, that's fairly positive. And what I would probably start thinking based off that is that this whole side here is a rise level one of a W formation on the daily time frame, which is a big call. And the reason I say that is because when it comes to the daily time frame, when you have a level rise within the level rise, you usually see three other rises. So you see one here, you see one here, and you see one here. So this whole area here, this would count as one, two, three within the rise level one. And so that's why I'm very interested to see how this daily candle closes. Um, tomorrow because it could be a good sign for ETH. And the other thing too about it, when I believe that something like this may happen or I'm suspicious it may happen, this makes me go to the ETH BTC chart because I want to know if I'm going to get helped out over there. If there is a long position, will ETH BTC help me? And we can see here that ETH BTC has been in this downtrend channel for a really, really long time. Since the 6th of September, 2022, we had this little breakout here. It, you may have been around when I talked about this on the show, on this show, that um, if we break the 50 EMA with volume, that's going to help our ETH USD trade run a lot more. And that is when ETH did have its little breakout when that happened. So I'm essentially waiting to see if the same thing happened because what happened here was the retest failed. Okay. So the, the, on the Bitcoin pair, we just came right back down, but now we're still in the same channel. This here was a lower low. That's why at the time I said, we have to wait and see if we can break that 50 EMA with volume first. But this one here at this point in time is not a lower low just, right? So that's the week there. There. And at this point in time, that current candle, again, still 12 hours to go. So anything could happen. But if that one closes tomorrow morning as a hammer as well, we may be on the verge of a W formation on the ETH BTC pair. And if that happens, because this center peak here is in the right spot for it, right? So this is the vector candle here, this magenta one here, and that's where the middle peak of the W came. So if this closes as a hammer to tomorrow, even a doji, if it closes as a doji, then we need another daily close to see if we get a star formation. But if it closes as a hammer, then we could be at the start of the right side of the W that will break the 50 EMA next, make a run for the 200, come back for the retest, and then it's moon time for ETH. So I'm not saying it's like now, I'm saying it's worth watching now because this could end up being a very, very good opportunity. And of course, yeah, it's dependent on us not getting terrible ETF news that just tanks the whole market. So it's like I said, nothing on today's video is a trade call. It's literally like, this is what I'm seeing and what I would look out for if there was no fundamental news getting in the way. So I'm interested in that. Now that wasn't the altcoin trade that I wanted to talk about. The altcoin trade that I wanted to talk about was this one here, which is Gito. I don't even know what this 
does J-I-T-O-U-S-D-T. This looks like it's in a position where it may break out fairly soon. I have taken a small position on this and um, you know, like it may it may go against me, I don't know. I've taken a small leverage position on this. If it does break out, I'll probably add to that position. But yeah, at this point in time, it's more likely that I'll lose. <laughs> like just YOLO. So anyway, now I've traded this actually on, this is a MEXC chart, but I actually traded it on Bing X because Bing X had a bigger wick down and it, we've stayed clear of that wick. And I can't find the chart on TradingView, but you can see it in the actual exchange anyway. So it, I mean, if you want to trade this, I I would say trader on Bing X, not Mexi. I'm not a fan of Mexi. I'm just going to, I'm totally honest about it. I don't like Mexi. So yeah, it's just, I'm charting it on here because it's the only chart I can find on TradingView, but I'm trading this on Bing X. And if you want Bing X, I believe that you can get a Bing X account no matter where you live. There is a link down below, sign up bonuses. That link gets you into our free section of our Discord. So anyway, check out the link if you want to trade this. But I have gone in a little bit early. This is, this is kind of, how I aggressively trade a thing like this, right? And I'll tell you the reasons why I took this. So the reasons why I took this was we had settled here for a fair period of time. And then look at this. So we have the fast move down, consolidation, fast move up. Exactly what I said before, consolidate to rebalance. This is the exact same thing in the opposite direction. So it's done now. We've rebalanced the books and it was a matter of, okay, where do they want to go? Once it's rebalanced, do they want to go down for lower prices or are they potentially going to change trend? And at this point in time, it's looking like they may want to change trend, but my current entry is aggressive because price is still under the 50 EMA, right? That's why it's an aggressive entry. It's why I'm not fully positioned. I've, I've taken a little gamble on it, but I'm not fully positioned yet where I would get fully positioned is if we change market structure next. So price would have to break the 50 EMA, come back for a retest and give us a higher low. And if I did get that higher low, that would be a safer spot to en enter. So it's not about the price. It's just if I get a higher low after the break of the 50 EMA, or it may even just be that price, uh, sorry, yeah, price consolidates and the 50 EMA goes like this, and then price just goes sideways after breaking out. So those are kind of the two to two ways in which I would end up adding to my position. But if I wasn't in a position, I wanted to trade this, uh, that would be where I would enter. This isn't exact, but just as an example, you know, it would end up being something like wherever the higher low was created, my stop loss could go under there. And then, uh, yeah, I'm in a, in a trade. But I, if, if that happens, if I get all of that, I'm hanging on to this back to this high, right? So it's gonna, it would end up being a huge trade. That's why I'm feeling like it's worth taking a bit of a gamble on regardless of what the Bitcoin ETF news does to the whole market. But look at this, it's 156% if it can get back to the this level right here. And I mean, based on this example, it's a 10 to one risk to reward. So a 10% account growth, if you're risking 1% of your account, regardless of your leverage, which everybody seems to think it matters, but not if you calculate it right. But anyway, and it might not even be that because your stop loss could end up being under the higher low, you know, which is would almost double. Anyway, I'm rambling now. The point of the matter is this is a good trade worth gambling on, in my opinion. And that is why I've gone in on it a little bit. And this is where I would, will personally add to it. Anyway, there you go. Enough disclaimers for that. If you guys ape in on this, just because you know that I've taken a gamble on it, like that that's your decision. You, you live with it. I want to talk about these dates here. So everyone's really, really banking on, you know, sometime literally between now and the 10th, I believe it is, of January, this um, ARK shares Bitcoin final deadline. The thing that kind of worries me about this, and I actually saw my friend Jason Pizzino, he did a video about this this morning on his channel where he talked about this in detail. And I was like, yes, I've been having the exact same thought. And watch his video because he explains it in depth and I'm not going to do that. But essentially what the gist of the thought is that I share with him is that this final deadline is really only for one, right? It's for this ARC 21 shares. The, all of the other deadlines are in March. So there's been a lot of talk really about people saying that they're all gonna get approved together. Well, what if this one gets rejected in order for it to get pushed, you know, they have to refile or whatever they have to do. I don't know the process and I don't really care. 
but this is why I don't care. <laughs> but what if this one doesn't actually go through? Because if they're saying that there's a bigger chance of them all being approved together, then doesn't it make more sense for that to happen around March here when there are final deadlines for a lot more ETFs than just this one? And what would the implications of that be if that were to happen? Like people are saying if it doesn't get approved by this Wednesday, it's going to be a major dump. I'm not even so sure about that because if it didn't get approved this Wednesday or between now and this Wednesday, then I really think that everybody's hanging out for this BlackRock one anyway. Like most people know that BlackRock owns money, right? It owns the whole financial system that's likely not going to get rejected. So even if this one here, this ARC one got rejected on Wednesday, it may be a short term move to the downside until people realize, well, the one we care about is the BlackRock one anyway. Not that we care, we don't care because we rather own Bitcoin ourselves, but as in the one we care about for the purpose of believing prices like going up in the future is this BlackRock one. So whatever major dip happened, if this one got rejected, I I believe it would be short term anyway and a good opportunity to buy before March, you know, and I don't necessarily think it would be like a panic buy situation. It could be like that, okay, it gets rejected, we go down, we settle, we find a new support and then it holds a support and now we start investing the rest of our whatever we've had put aside for this bull market. We start in deploying that into the market and then we just sit and wait. You know, we would assume that with this many to be approved in March and one of them being BlackRock, we would assume that they're going to get approved in March, right? So worst case scenario, if this gets rejected, it's a buy the dip opportunity for me. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about it in January. Okay. I really don't care about it in January. All I want is to not lose money by getting wicked out with leverage trades. So I'm sitting out and I'm, I'm just exercising patience. And, you know, I, um, I was still, actually, I, I was, I should update you. I was talking about this the other day when this happened and I had been in a lot of long-term leverage trades and I had my stop moved up and that this wick took them all out. It actually didn't take one of them out. So I do still have one long leverage trade that is still in play at this point in time. And it's safe at this point in time. So that's the only one I have open and the stop loss is in profit. So I don't care about this. <laughs> I don't care about this. If it goes bad, I'm buying more Bitcoin because I have USDT that I've been waiting to buy it with anyway. And if it goes great, well, great. I'll spend that USDT on altcoins when they start moving next. I don't care. <laughs> so there is a lot of articles coming up that BlackRock, even though their final deadline is here March, just note that there is the third deadline on the 15th of Jan, okay? So this column here is still relevant for all of these other ones. So could it be possible that ARC gets approved on Wednesday-ish and all of these also get approved at the same time? Yes. Right. So, yes, that is an absolute positive. Doesn't mean we have to go till March for the final. We don't have to go to the end. Like it could all happen this week. There's a lot of articles coming out about BlackRock saying that they expect the SEC to approve it by this Wednesday. So they're basically banking on the third deadline to be met. You know, this is one article here where they're saying it and that according to reports, the asset manager has lined up over two billion in capital for its spot Bitcoin ETF launch. Well, who cares? Because if it doesn't launch, there's still just holding their two billion until March. So what does that even mean? Like, why are you telling us that? Who cares? <laughs> I'm just going to write who cares as the title of this video because I just don't care. Anyway, and then um, it is another one, you know, basically saying the same thing that they're kind of expecting it to happen on Wednesday as well. And so, but do we trust BlackRock? I don't know. We don't trust BlackRock and we especially don't trust them when they are putting out media articles. So those are my thoughts on the ETF. I don't care. Moral of the story is just be careful this week with leverage trades. If you spot, have a plan, everything else, let's just sit and wait and see. If you're wanting to trade that JTO, check out the link in the description of this video for a link to BingX where you can trade that as well as many, many other altcoins and commodities as well, actually, as a matter of fact. And you can trade on Big X in most places around the world. So I'll see you guys on the next video. Have an amazing day.